Um, you know, it's, it's such a privilege to have these God connections in our lives. How many of you know what I'm talking about when you meet somebody that's just so special and that you just feel connected to and you've barely known them, you know, and that was really um, a, a story of Pastor Michelle and I. But, but you know, looking at that video, I want to just share where this movement has come in two and a half years. Explicit has done 10 local conferences, eight local leader equipping events, three international conferences. We have impacted approximately 6,000 people. And by the end of this year, we will have done six local events, two international conferences, and one international leaders equipping event. And we're, people are interested in California, Canada, the UK, Mexico, and Tanzania about having explicit come. Pastor Michelle, this is huge. Okay, so two and a half years ago, it started as a seed. Actually, it started as a need for your husband, for you to step in to help with the youth. Tell us a little bit about this journey. Yes, I, it actually, before I get to that, I wanted to share that actually when I think back, God, God started way before that. And um, I grew up in a home, a little, little bit about myself, you know, I grew up here in Hawaii, local girl. Um, but when I was growing up, you know, I grew up in a home that was very chaotic. And so um, there was a lot of abuse going on, a lot of, you know, fear. Um, and my favorite place to be as a little girl, like five years old, my younger years, would be I would curl up in a ball in, a, in, in my closet, in my dark closet. And that's where I would go to as my retreat, you know. and and um, my, my whole life, I, I think God was trying to call that little girl out of the closet, you know, to, to, to say that you, because when I was in that closet, I would feel in a way safe, you know, in the, in the sense of escaping from what was going on around me. But at the same time, I was feeling very lonely and invisible and worthless, you know. And so God, I, I believe, saw that little girl and wanted to call that little girl out and to, to really show me his father's love and that's this whole journey of my life and explicit actually has been part of that journey of of really communicating to me that that god is real you know and god cares and god has a call and destiny on on my life but also everyone else you know and so that's that's how it started so um but going back to but back to 2012, um, I was a children's pastor at our church. Uh, we meet at Kalani High School just down the street. And um, I, in 2012, my husband asked me, he's a senior pastor, Rob, he asked me if I would take over the youth ministry as well. The big, and what do you say when your husband, who's a senior pastor, asks you to do something? Right? <laughs> yes, no, sir. No. No, I say yes. <laughs> you don't have to go. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, I didn't have experience, much experience with the youth, but I would say, hey, I'll give it a shot, you know. So um, I stepped into that place, and the first thing that I wanted to do was have a purity camp, uh, a summer camp with our a small group of high schoolers because previous leadership never talked about sexuality and I knew that our, I had a little burden you know that the kids were immersed in a sexualized culture and I, they needed to be equipped with a, with a mindset that could help them and so we um, I didn't know exactly myself how to do it so I, I called you know different pastor friends of mine to help speak at this camp and what happened at that camp was I well, the, Leah Notch who actually is here tonight she's my assistant there Thank you, Leah. She, she was speaking, and at one moment, she had asked all the kids to bow their heads and raise their hand if they had lost their virginity. And I was about, fell off my chair when about a third to a half raised their hand, and I knew that these kids, you know, I knew them from when they were babies, and I knew their parents didn't know, and I thought, Lord, this is the fruit of not addressing this at all or very well in a way that reaches the hearts of the youth. And um, in, at that camp, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, Michelle, get ready for something much bigger in the future. And I thought, what in the world, <laughs> Lord? I had no idea what he meant. So fast forward to the following year, a year later, 2013, we had a purity camp for this time for the middle school kids. And then fast forward five months or so after that, I was in a conversation with a, a, another senior pastor, and Pastor Alan Cardenas, and he asked me about 
my youth ministry, so I just mentioned about the purity camps, and he said, can you, his eyes got really big, he says, can you do this for our church too, because I don't know how to address this in my church either, and um, I didn't know what to say, that, say to that, so I said, well, you know, maybe we can talk sometime, you know. Then the following month, I found myself in a, in a meeting with about 15 to 20 senior pastor men, and I was the only woman in the, in the group, so I was like a fly on the wall, you know, just wanting to, I was just really, you know, didn't know what to do. But I, I was just, you know, visiting the group, so I was just very quiet. And Pastor Allen, who I had talked to a month before, interrupted the leader of the group, and I was horrified. And he, he said, Michelle, can you share with them about the purity camps? And I hesitated, but, you know, with his encouragement, I did. And then at that meeting, the, all the pastors said, Michelle, can you do an island-wide purity camp? Because we all need help in this area. We really have struggle. And so I... I wanted to serve, I wanted to help, and so without any experience, without any clue on how to do this, I just started to pray and ask the Lord to help me and said, okay, Lord, just yes. help, you know, this is a need. And so um, the first month, I just cold called pastors and, you know, they didn't know me, but many of them were willing to give me a few minutes of their time. And within a month, there was about 40 churches that came on board and said, we're in, we're in. And I... I was really surprised because it seemed like the Holy Spirit was already moving in their hearts um, because it's a felt need. And all they needed was someone to say, hey, let's do this together, you know? And you know, what's amazing is, um, some of you know my story, but g g rewind back to when I, we were youth pastors on Maui. When we first became youth pastors on Maui, the very first year, one of the things that was on my heart was, Lord, I want to reach out to these kids in the area of purity. But when Pastor Josh and I were, well, you know, before we were pastors, we were youth, hello. We, we were in that youth ministry, and when our youth pastor would talk about stuff, we would put our fingers in our ears, literally. I mean, we would roll our eyes, and we'd say, oh, yeah. You know, he would say, you hold hands, you'll fornicate. And to us, we we're like, whatever. I'm not, that's not going to happen. Now, I understand what he's saying, that it opens the door. And so when we became youth pastors, I said, honey, I want to do something so edgy, so different. I want to do these purity series where every year they look forward to doing it. And so our first purity series was called Rated R. No more restrictions, choose to be righteous. And so for nine years as a youth pastor, I did these purity series that, that literally changed the culture of our, of our whole youth ministry. And even now we're seeing marriages and people getting married that are now young adults that have come out of that. But then we moved to Oahu and we, I stopped being a youth pastor and God shifted things. And I was like, Lord, and how many of you have ever been there before where, you know, you have such a passion for something, but the season that you're in, you're not doing it. Or you think that it's dead or you think it's, oh, is that done in my life? And so I got here and then Pastor Josh Coe, one AG district meeting, he leans over and says, you need to meet Pastor Michelle. We're doing a purity conference called Explicit. And I said, well, give me your number because I have such a heart for that. And that's really where we met up. And it's so neat because, you know, I, I want to encourage you guys tonight. And I think something that's huge is we're not just t here talking about purity. We're talking about when God calls you to do something that's so far beyond what you think you can do. And tell us about the little bit of banter that you had with God at one point when God's pushing you forward in this leadership posi position. God's pushing you forward to, to, to take arms of different pastors and begin to lead and organize something on this scale. What was going through your mind? What did you feel like in that moment? Because address those that maybe are in this place that are in that same place. Is I was completely overwhelmed because I have no grid, no experience. Um, you know, my youth group had 20 kids, or t actually 10 children, 10 youth, and they invited their friends, so it was 20. <laughs> you know, so we, you know, came from a very small church and had no clue, um, felt very overwhelmed, um, and, and yet, you know, realizing that really the story is that when you feel unqualified and you feel like you're, you're the most unlikely person on earth to do anything, <laughs> That, that all God wants is, is a willing heart, you know, to just trust in Him, because He's really the one that does it. And so this whole journey has been one of unfolding before me, as I'm just saying, okay, Lord, just show me what to do. He's been unfolding, and I've been full of surprise. God is full of surprises along the way. And so, so yeah, it, it, I had this banter with God one night, which is a typical uh, part of my journey, you know. <laughs> you know, with God, you can be real, 
he knows your thoughts anyway, you know, and so you can be brutally real with God, and he's, he can handle it, you know, and, and he, he knows us and knows, you know, he wants to communicate with our hearts, and so one night, um, I woke up in the middle of the night, and um, he, it was one of those two-way conversations, doesn't happen all the time, but, you know, it was a two-way conversation, and he, he said, Michelle, uh, remember when you were a newly married w- wife, and you really wanted to have children of your own. See, I had struggled with premature menopause in my 20s, so I couldn't have biological children, but we ended up adopting. So God was reminding me, remember when you were a newly married woman and you wanted to have your own children? And I said, yes, Lord. And he said, well, you're giving birth to explicit. And uh, this is my first, this is my response, but I'm too old for this. I mean, and without a beat. Anybody he, make excuses before? Go oh, on. yeah. I was like, hey, I, wait, I'm too old for this. And, he, and without skipping a beat, he goes, what about Sarah? And then I said, <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, I, you know, I, I teach, I preach in our church too. And I said, Lord, I teach people that one way to discover your, your purpose, your destiny call is to t- discover your passions right? And, and so I said, Lord, my, I have a passion for your, the whole, create atmos- atmospheres or environments where the Holy Spirit can come and encounter people. I have a passion to see the body of Christ coming together in love and unity. Uh, you know, I have a passion for people just to be healed and delivered and, and really encounter God in a deep way. But purity, it's, it's a burden on my heart. I mean, I'm a mother, mother in the kingdom, you know, and mother for people, towards people and kids. And so, of course, it's a huge burden, but I can't say on honesty that it's a passion. So, Lord, why don't you pick someone like Pastor Shannon? You know, it's been a passion for her for 10 years in Maui. I said, Lord, you know, and so making all of these, you know, ex- reasons. And, and, and so, and then he, after I finished, there was a pause, and the Lord said, what about Moses? Did he have a passion to free Israel? Wow. He didn't even want to do it. And I thought, oh, I, that sinking feeling came over me like, oh. And he said to me, Michelle, in some assignments, obedience is more important to me than passion. Come on, let that one sink in for a second. Everybody just go, oh. <laughs> you know, but, and so, so since then, though, you know, the Lord has really helped me, you know, because he's, he's been telling, you know, he, he would tell me, you're giving birth to this baby. And, you know, diff- late, a few months later, he would say, you need to love this baby and stop complaining about the baby. You need to love this baby and stop being afraid of the baby, you know. And so that was my heart's cry. I said, okay, Lord, change my heart. Help me to love this baby, you know. And I was going to share with you one, one mo- moment that God changed my heart. This is a, God is so creative. He, he knows the key to our hearts, right? So we were in Singapore and shopping at the mall. And some of you, I don't know if some of you know who Brett, Pastor Brandon Ahu is, but he was one of the team and we were shopping. And I hear this scream, this male scream across the, across the, 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 the room um, in the store. Mom! Really loud. And then the second time, Mom! Now I ignored this, this voice because my own two kids were in Hawaii. And um, then Pastor Brandon comes walking up to me. He goes, Mom, how does the shirt look? Because he tried on a shirt. He wanted to ask my opinion. And I go, oh, Brandon, that looks really good on you. So he walked back to the, 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 the you know, dressing room. And the Lord said, just be the mom. And because and, I was so overwhelmed with how do I do this? How do I do this? You know? and, and so the Lord just changed my, mom, my, changed my heart to be the mom and then just to love not only the kids and the youth, but even the millennial team that was, you know, there. And I said, well, okay, my, Lord, I can do that. I can be the mom. I can love, you know. And so it's it, it simplified, but yet God, um, you know, just knew how to change my heart. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, I just want to yeah. say, you know, Pastor Michelle is one of the most humble, loving, caring people I know. And I, I, and when she, and when she said that to me, oh, mate, you know, I was bad with God. You should do it. I said, no. I said, you were the perfect person for this because you have a heart for everyone and you know how to bridge past denominations and ages and you have that mama's heart to pastor and shepherd and you know I just want to encourage all of you out there and we share this because 
This is something that, you know, God calls us to big things at times. And, and, and the, the start seems sometimes, you know, you don't understand the details. You don't know the next step. And like she shared many a times, it's been one faith step at a time. How many of you in here, you're in the middle of something where you're like, what's the next step, God? How many of you feel like God's called you, he's planted like that seed, or you see the need, either the seed or the need, and you're like, Lord, water it. You have a vision, you have a dream. Come on, raise your hand. And, and you're asking God what to do. See, tonight I want to inspire you that, that with, with this woman saying yes, and that's really all God asked was for obedience and for her to say yes. God has now drawn people from all over the world that together, and, and even me, like, you know, for me, I can't do that full time because I, I'm here and I love what I'm doing here. I have Impact 7, I got women's ministry. But you know, God is so great to me that I get to be partner with this amazing team and be a part of it and still the, the place in my heart to reach the young people, amen? And um, you know, part of that, and we wanna share in just a second a video, is something that we're gonna be doing tomorrow night. And Explicit is a ministry for junior high, high school, young adults, and parents. Not only conferences, but equipping. I know that she has partnered with a lot of psychologists and has dealt with suicide and all, all kinds of things. And tomorrow night, we are doing a movie screening, a documentary about pornography called Over 18. And I, we'll be honest, it's a little explicit, okay? In, in the sense where it deals with things that you would be maybe taken back by but it's happening to our children. They're being exposed to it and we wanna bring awareness. So I want you to check out this video and then in a little bit, we're gonna open it up for some questions. Okay. Here's the facts. Nine out of 10 boys and six out of 10 girls struggle with online pornography before the ages of 18. In fact, 94% of them struggle with it before the ages of 14. And 60% of them have viewed online pornography in their very own homes. While this topic seems so cliche and so taboo, it's a real big problem that's ending up at the doorstep of our homes. This summer, Explicit is partnering up with churches to put on a film, Over 18, a documentary on modern pornography. This clear-eyed examination of modern pornography and its effects on kids, teens, and parents seeks to raise awareness about this problem in the home and seeks to bring restoration to those who are struggling with these addictions. The event will begin at seven o'clock at Red Hill Campus. I wanna personally invite parents, aunties and uncles, and those who have students that are struggling with pornography to attend this filming as we seek to open up a conversation and begin a track to restoration for our students who are struggling in this area. Hope to see you there. All right, obviously it's not at Red Hill. It's gonna be here tomorrow, but tomorrow night at 6.30. And so Pastor Michelle, tell us who should be coming, what ages, um, so we can give everybody a little bit of an insight. Yes, well, first of all, I believe every adult should come because every adult has youth and children in their lives. Whether you're a parent, especially, of course, grandparent, auntie, uncle, you know, spiritual mom, spiritual dad, um, it's just a really good awareness and we also want to equip you with some tools and some takeaways that you can actually, practical helps that you can help, you know, the youth in your lives. Um, and, and of course, we also want to invite older youth, like 16 um, and older, because it is more of an explicit type of um, movie um, in that sense, you know, for, for the, especially it's meant, you know, for, it was actually uh, created to change the law in Canada uh, to, to make internet pornography um, inaccessible to kids under 18. And so it was actually shown in front of the parliament wow. to change the laws, you know, the government mountain, you know? Yes. And so, yeah, we, what we really want to encourage everyone to come, um, especially all the adults and, you know, youth 16 and older. Yeah, and you know what was amazing is um, when they showed it at Red Hill, one of the pastors there who was young girls, you know, he, when he watched it, 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 is, it is a hard to swallow some of the things that are going on. I watched it and I, I was like, I didn't know some of that stuff, but it's, it's what's happening. And my kids are being raised in a, in a society where at one click of the button, all this is exposed to them. All darkness is flooding in through their eyes, in their heart, in their spirit, and out now ba out back through their lifestyle. 
And uh, I'm like, oh, Lord. And so this pastor shared with us, we met last, last Wednesday, we ran into him, and he said, you know, I was it, was, it was hard to swallow, but you know what it did for me? That week I went home with, I think, my 10 and 12-year-old girl, and I had a really good conversation with them. They didn't watch it, but the dad watched it. And he said, he began to open the doors of saying, hey, if you ever see anything, if you ever someone tells you a word that you don't understand you know come talk to me you know it's okay and he began to help them and he was so happy that he had that conversation and if we can create conversation if we can create open doors if we can create like i preached on mother's day we can become light defenders and not allow the enemy to come through our homes in our rooms in our living rooms through our phones and so you know margaret i want you to get a microphone and we want to open it up um, for some questions. Okay, we're going to have some fun tonight. We have a little bit more time and we definitely want to have some time of prayer at the end. But um, if you have a question for myself or Pastor Michelle, maybe in the area of explicit, of how she's walked this journey to step out and do something so profound and make an impact, or maybe even on the film a little bit, because we want to be able to answer any questions. Any, anybody? Raise your hand. I know it's kind of... Well, some of you have questions for Pastor Michelle, because this is such a awesome opportunity i mean it is a touchy subject but at the same time it is a great opportunity yeah. so raise your hand if you have some questions for her yeah, and explicit is really here to serve all of you we just have a heart you know to really serve all of you and just one tidbit about this movie as you're thinking um britney delamora who is a was an ex-porn actress um, who actually came to speak at explicit events in 2016. She has a powerful redemptive story. God changed her life. She's actually on her way to become a pastor herself. You know, God has really redeemed her life. She was a connection in letting us know about the movie because she's yes. interviewed in it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. We have a question here. I know this movie is about pornography, and I have um, three girls. I only have girls only. And um, the ages are 17 and 15, and I was planning to take my older ones. But how, how is it for the girls? Because, you know, just from me, pornography can be yeah, like Yeah, typically boys. I know we tend to think that it's a guy problem more yeah. so than a girl problem. But actually, statistics are showing that there's a, a rise in girls getting, you know, addicted to porn. Not as high as guys, but it's on the rise. I mean, we did, we did a... Uh, a survey, anonymous survey with youth group, and there was about that a third to a half that said they're, they have they struggle with pornography, and these are all girls in youth groups. So, and so what we yeah. say is, you know, um, if you're junior high or you have a junior high or high schooler that has already been is is heavily into pornography, none of this is going to be new for them. This is it's not visually. Um, explicit. It's the content in which they talk about how pornography has grown from the years to being maybe like a Playboy magazine to what it is to now. Very grotesque, very, very violent. And they share a story of this a wonderful family of a little boy at eight or nine years old was just playing on the computer and pop one thing came and, and over years he became a porn addict. And see, this is what happens is what we don't realize is that that affects one day his marriage and affects his children. And, and that's why we want to take a stand and bring awareness to this now. And even if you struggle with it, I mean, mo and I'll, let's, let's just be real. Most people in this room may, might struggle with pornography and we don't want to bring condemnation. We want to see healing. Yes. We want to see hope. We want to say yes. that it's okay that God can see you through this. Amen? Yes, right? Like, that's right? Let's bring that's up the right. taboo subjects because you know, we, need, we, we yes. need to talk about it in the church. But any other questions out there? Yeah, we want church. Don't be shy. No. We want church to be a, the safest place on earth to talk about these things. Yes, and that's yeah. really where, why I started the Purity Series all those years ago as well. Said, all right. Well, do we have a question over here? <laughs> Did you say that you include the parents in, in this with the explicit when? When you did you say you did children are invited and oh parents yeah, so so we the, you um, include the parents. Well, what we did we we have a are very much we value parents. So besides having um, events for junior high, high school, young adults, we also have equipping uh, events and even conferences for parents because we believe that parents are the number one disciplers of their own kids. And we know that we want to support parents because we, 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 you are the heroes and you spend, you have great impact on your children without you even maybe sometimes realizing it, but you have great impact on your children. And so we want to equip you and come alongside of you. Yes. yes. Awesome. Okay. Any other questions? I have to run. Oh, we got some over there. She's I'm running. I'm running, I'm running. <laughs> I'm running. 
Are you guys enjoying this? It's a little different, I know, for a Wednesday night, but you know what? Let's, that's what impact's about, kind of shaking things up a little bit, right? Is there child care? <laughs> because I, I, we would love to come and like learn and know more. Our kids are still young. Like We look at this from like young kids, but my daughter's going into public school this year, and it terrifies me. So having being ahead of the game and knowing, but... We don't, we don't have children's ministry for it, but we can give you some of the package, packages and, you know, um, definitely share with you some of the things that are brought up, which are pretty profound. Yeah. Do we have another question? Yes. Yeah. The average age right now of exposure is eight years I old. I can run pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. I understand you're going to be having camps for leadership training. Is that correct? Did I hear that? Were you going to train some leaders? Well, we do have a leader, e leader equipping events throughout the year because we really want to come along and support pastors and leaders in the church because, you know, they're on the front lines the most. So, so is there, uh, have you developed a curriculum coming from an educator's background We're to help working them on facilitate? It. Oh, okay, She's actually great. writing a book right. about the explicit Thank movement, you. which I found out tonight, which I'm super excited about. And that is part of the heart. And definitely go to their website. Can you share the website? Yes, www.explicitmovement.org. Explicitmovement.org. Thank you for the encouragement. We, we are working on ideas for curriculum. And we actually, I'll just say this, this by this summer, we will have a video curriculum, uh, eight session series on eight common questions on LGBT issues uh, put on by um, Eddie Sariel and John Allison on our team and that's going to be a hot topic. It's broken into eight sessions. You can watch tw 20 minutes each session. You could use it in youth groups or church groups and just to spur discussion and really understand the issue. So, so awesome. Yeah. So awesome. Any other questions? Yes. A few more and um, then we'll move on. Hi. I want to say that, you know, our president, our, ex uh, our former president, Clinton had had uh, something in the news and then he made a comment to uh, make that statement that it wasn't um, sexual so then people um, young, young people today do not see what he did as sexual so I wonder if those kind of things come up in the film to identify it because you know technically it is but he he let it be known throughout the United States that that, that was it. So, you know, it set a, a mindset to young people and, and well, they have diseases from that. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's definitely a desensitization that has happened. Um, and that's what we're trying to do is bring an awareness and a sensitivity to what is right and wrong. And there's a lot of gray. How many of you know that? There's a lot of gray where it's like, you know, let's mix it all together. And it, I like the, the color gray, but we want to bring a clear picture of what is truth of the word of God. And in this film, it we'll be honest, from all different perspectives. There's a man who um, was like an editor of uh, one of the top sexual magazines, and he talks about how he never thought it was bad. He, he, he was like always dismissed ever all the, the things that people would say, but then he had kids, and he started thinking differently.